All right, exponential functions with e. Before, we were dealing with y equals a times b to the x. And the b determined whether we had growth or decay. And so if b was bigger than 1, it was growing. If b was less than 1, it was decay. The problem is now, e is our, always our b. And e is approximately 2.718. So e is always going to be bigger than 1. So the question is, can you only ever have growth? The answer is no. So what can we do with e by raising it to a power to get a number less than 1? The answer is what we just did up here. e to the negative 1.5 gave us an answer that was less than 1. Remember how when we take the reciprocal, when we have a negative exponent, we're forced to take the reciprocal. And so e to a negative power will be less than 1. And so e to a negative x is going to be decay, where e to a positive x is going to be growth. And that's the thing you have to look out for because E is always going to be bigger than 1. So you have to look out for when you get this reciprocal thing. So, things to remember. We always talked about three things. Um, y equals 3 times E to the negative X. That negative X is going to make this a decay graph. 3 was our starting value. your initial value. And so we start at 3, 1, 2, 3. Remember how all of our functions, no matter how much they decayed, would never get below 0. And so we're going to have this graph of 0, 3, and y equals 0 as our asymptote. And then it's just going to decay. I'm interested in more that you realize that it's decay more that you know where it starts, and the asymptote. The domain for this one is all real numbers. It doesn't matter what x is. I can plug anything in. And then the range, all the y values, stay above this point. And so all the y values are greater than 0. All right. So we have another starting point. e is being raised to a positive x, and so this is going to be growth. And we have a plus 4. It's with the x, and so that plus 4 is going to shift it to the left 4. And so even though this 2 was our starting value, it's going to shift 1, 2, 3, 4 to the left. Our horizontal asymptote is still y equals 0 and now it's going to grow negative 4 comma 2 domain for this function still it doesn't matter what our x's are and still the range is everything greater than 0 alright number 9 3 is still the starting value Recognize that x is a positive exponent, and so this still represents growth. And so it's still going to grow like the, the second one here. And then this minus 2 is with the x, so it's opposite of what we think it should. It, it actually moves it to the right. And the plus 4 affects it vertically and moves it up 4. And so we go up 1, 2, 3, 4. That's where our horizontal asymptote is now. y equals 4. Our starting value was at 3. 1, 1, 2, 3 is where it was, but it also shifted up 1, 2, 3, 4. So notice that it's still 3 above our horizontal asymptote. And then it shifted to the left. So relative to our horizontal, it's gone up 1, 2, 3. Same starting value relatively. And then 2 to the right. And we said it was growth, and so it goes like that. This point is 2 to the right and up. 
seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Our domain is all real numbers still. But the range now, all the y values don't start until our horizontal asymptote here. And so y has to be greater than four. We'll come back and talk about the continuously compounded interest.